Hello, how are you? I'd like to start my talk with one question. What is human or what are you? Do you have any answers? I know there are many, many of answers, so today I present two possible answers. First one is thinking. A French philosopher, Pascal, said, man is no more than a reed, the weakest in nature, but he is a thinking reed. In Japanese, ningen wa kangairu ashi de aru. So thinking is one key factor for being a human being. The second is your memories. Each of us have our own memories, and I like traveling, so this is my most memorable memories. Last year, I traveled Australia, visited Uluru by this bus. It takes three days, and this was so tough. <laughs> but I like this travel, so this is my best memory. Thinking and memory is my answer. So, well then, where do these take place? It is the brain. The brain is the organ that contributes to this thinking and memory. And all of us know that the brain manipulates ourselves. But the brain has been a mystery for more than 2,000 years and is not fully understood yet. Nowadays, researchers want to reveal the mystery from the view of psychology, computer science, systems theory, and neuroscience. How do we start brain function? There are multiple levels of understanding of the brain. It starts from individual level, me. So how we react to the environmental cue is to understand this question is revealed by this individual level. And next is the brain. We know which part of the brain is activated when we speak, move, uh, or feel nervous now. <laughs> <laughs> and brain have many neurons, so next is the cell level. Neuron connect each other, make complicated neuron circuit like this. For more detail, researchers are studying at the molecular level. How are memory stores in the brain? Or classified in the brain? At the brain level, first, we receive the environmental stimuli like sights, sounds, smell, from your eyes, ears, and nose. You know what you see less than in second. So this is the sensory memory. And short-term memory lasts four minutes. This is a temporary recall of the information like telephone number. It is often referred to as the post-it note of the brain. Finally, we have long-term memory, which is I often lose when I drink too much. <laughs> But also, my memory of my trip is also classified as a long-term memory. There are several diseases related to memory. Dementia. People with dementia lose their memories, short-term memory and long-term memory. At the cellular level, how it affects? This is the actual neuron circuit. I like this beautiful picture, but this is too complicated. So I will explain it with a simple drawing. This is a neuron, and this neuron connects to the next neuron like this. This connection is called a synapse. So neurons connect each other through synapses like this. Synaptic connection is very flexible. Neurons can make a new synapses or erase synapses or they can strengthen the synapses like this. It is said that there are 100 trillions of synapses dynamically changes upon the stimuli. So this dynamic and complicated connection 
allows us to have a complicated memory in our brain. How it changes? For example, when you have a new memory or when you learn a new thing, like a new song, there are new synaptic connections like this. So learning something new is the changing the connection of the synapse. At the cellular level, to increase the synapse or make a long-term memory, two things happen, transcription and translation. I, I will explain it. This is DNA, you know. To read DNA, our cells make RNA by the process called transcription. And next, our cell use this RNA to make protein by a process called translation. It is interesting, but less than only 5% of the DNA is translated into the protein. What about the remaining? Remaining 95% is also transcribed into RNA. And this RNA regulates the transcription and translation by its structure. So RNAs are used to regulate or control the when, where, how of the transcription and translation. For example, in neuron, when you learn something new or new song, this synapse activated and become bigger like this. But to make it bigger, a new synthesis of the protein is necessary. But this synapse is far away from the nucleus where DNA is stored. How neurons make a new protein in this situation? For a long time, this is a big question in neuroscience. And actually, the key factor is RNA. RNAs are the synapse always, but this is unread RNA. Like you have unread message in your phone all the time. When it activated, this unread RNA are translated into protein. So this is how RNA controls the when. After activation, there are new transcription in nucleus, and this RNA transported to the synapse. This is the where. Also, RNA controls the amount, quantity of the protein. This is the how. So RNA regulates timing and location and quantity of the protein. That's why so many people are want to uncover or studying the RNA level changes. And we use this kind of machine to study RNA level changes. This machine gives us these kinds of results. Can you see what this is? Yeah, someone know. And I'm sorry, I also can't. <laughs> <laughs> Current problem using this method is the lack of real-time detection and lack of observation in the body and lack of observation of dynamics. So this is when and where and how. To study when, where, how in actual brain. Yeah, seeing is the easiest way. So we started to develop a method to visualize RNA in brain. Normally, we use this fluorescent leveled probe to detect target RNA in living cell. It gives us this kind of picture. It seems okay. And this is single neuron. Yeah, but if you look at Calvary, there are some problems. There are some blight spot here. This is the junk. This is not the neurons. Too much background noise affect the what we see and make it difficult to understand. For example, this is normally you can see. Do you know what this is? This is Orion. 
When you see Orion from the city, it looks like that. It's hard to see. But if you go to the mountain, you can see these clear, beautiful stars. The difference is, again, the background noise. From the city, you can also see this clear picture if you turn off your light. So we started to mimic this situation to improve our imaging. This is previous one. The problem is this unbound probe have noise signal. So we turn off this unbound probe and make it frozen when it binds to the target RNA. You see? We can separate the probe on and off. So this is actually unbound. We can separate unbound and bindings. Using this probe and tunnel, we can see this clear picture in brain. There are now no background noise. Also, you can see a clear puncture in single neuron. Compared to the previous one, you can see the clear difference. And yes, this is what we want to see starts in from the mountain. We have been developed a method to visualize RNA in living brain. Also, not only the visualizing, but also we want to reveal how they move, how they come from upon the stimuli. So, seeing is believing. With a technique, we can monitor the when, where, and how of RNA dynamics in living brain. Using this method, we want to uncover the mystery of brain. Also, if we can understand what happened in your brain when you learn by RNA level, we can make a new medicine to cure dementia. Also, we will, I hope, I hope we can get an important key to reveal the brain mystery. Thank you.